Greetings. My name is Andrew Isaacs. I'm on the faculty of the University of California, Berkeley, Haas School of Business, where my job is to teach climate science and climate change strategies to our business students. In this video, we will talk about climate change, what it is, and why it's happening. Climate and weather are different concepts. Weather is the set of events that happens every day in our atmosphere. And climate refers to long-term weather. But the term climate change refers to so much more than just, oh, the weather is changing over the long term. When we speak of climate change, we are trying to capture the many interrelated chemical and physical changes that we are making to Earth's biosphere, atmosphere, oceans, and soils, in addition to altering Earth's weather. In the next few minutes, we'll concentrate on just one of the important aspects of climate change, which is global warming. Let's start with an update. 2023 was the warmest year ever recorded. In all likelihood, 2023 was the warmest year to have occurred in at least the last 150,000 years. We know this based on geological data plus temperature records which date back to around 1850, when people started to use thermometers to measure and record weather data. Not only was 2023 the warmest year ever recorded globally, but 77 countries around the world set record high annual average temperatures. Some of those countries are very populous, including China, Brazil, Japan, Germany, and Mexico, meaning millions of people suffer the consequences of these changes. Still, it is noteworthy that in 2023, both Earth's land and Earth's oceans set new records for the warmest year ever recorded. You may have heard the news that in 2023, Earth exceeded 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming for the first time. To be honest, breaking that record wasn't a big surprise, as the last nine years have included all nine years of the warmest years ever recorded. We also know that, unfortunately, we are already committed to more warming in the years to come. Here, we're looking at a map of the Earth color-coded to show how much warming has occurred. In this case, we're comparing 2023 with Earth's average surface temperature over a 30-year benchmark period from 1951 to 1980. The color coding indicates how much warming has taken place at each location on our planet. The red areas, which cover much of the Earth's land surface, indicate warming of 2 to 4 degrees, and the yellow areas indicate warming of 1 to 2 degrees. There are a couple of blue spots as well, showing a few places that are actually a bit cooler now than in the mid-20th century. One noteworthy blue spot is the North Atlantic, just off the coast of Greenland. The reason that area is cooler is because global warming is causing the ice sheet on Greenland to melt. As a result, ice cold water flowing off Greenland into the North Atlantic is cooling that little corner of the world. That cooling is not, by any means, good news either. I find this graphical rendition of Earth's warming to be a little bit easier to understand than the colorful map we were just looking at. The black dots are the average annual temperature of our planet for the period 1850 through 2023. The red line is just a regression curve through those dots. It is easy to see that there was no warming to speak of in the 1800s followed by a little bit of warming in the early 20th century. Things really took off around 1960, and warming has continued at a fast pace ever since, right through to the present. 
I've circled the number 1.6 on the right-hand side of the chart to indicate the approximate level of warming in 2023 relative to the pre-industrial era. The exact amount of warming was 1.54 degrees, plus or minus 0.06 degrees. It's easy to see that 2023 jumped way out ahead of all previous measurements. One last thing you might notice on this chart is a vertical black tick mark for each year. Those represent the confidence intervals, or uncertainty, associated with each year's measurement. You'll notice that way back in 1850, when there were very few temperature measurements being recorded, the error bars are quite big. But as the years went by, and more and more climate records were being kept around the world, those confidence intervals shrink to almost nothing. Frankly, since about 1970, climate measurements have been so commonplace that we now have very high confidence in what's happening. I mentioned a minute ago that the land is heating up faster than the oceans. This chart shows that trend perfectly. Again, the data start in 1850 and go right through to the present. And you'll notice that the confidence in our data was low in the early years, as you'd expect, but very high for the past 60 to 70 years. On this chart, you'll notice that the amount of warming now exceeds 2 degrees. The reason for that is that the land is heating up faster than the oceans. Now, the reason we pay attention to how much the land is heating up is that most life on Earth is on land, not in the oceans. And of course, most humans live on land, and the food that we consume is mostly land-based, and so on. So the fact that the land is heating up faster than the oceans is unhelpful in terms of the effects of climate change, because that means that we are impacting most of the life forms on Earth, including humans, much faster than the global average temperature increase would indicate. Now, worldwide, there are five gold standards in terms of sources of climate data. The two gold standards in the United States are both familiar to you, NASA and NOAA. Then there are two similar gold standards in Europe when it comes to climate data, one in the UK and one run by the EU. There is one more excellent source of climate data, this one being the Japanese Meteorological Agency. Those five sources, plus some other smaller regional climate agencies, are where we get our climate data. There is also a leading non-governmental climate data entity called Berkeley Earth. Berkeley Earth does data analytics using raw climate data from those five gold standards. Most of the data you're seeing in this video are from Berkeley Earth. This colorful chart simply superimposes four of those government sources of climate data, plus Berkeley Earth. Even though the data are collected independently, you can see outstanding agreement between the different sources. This kind of comparison gives us additional confidence that what we are observing in terms of climate change is really happening, and that the scientific community is aligned. Here we are looking at the seasonal change of Earth's average temperature from January through December, each year from 1850 to 2023. The colors indicate the range of years represented. For example, the dark blue shades are the 1800s, the light blue is the mid-20th century, and so on. What you'll notice is that the 2000s in yellow and the years 2021, 2022, and 2023 in red and black really stand out, especially 2023 shown in black. There has been a clear progression of warming beginning in the 1850s right through to the present that is impossible to miss. And most of that 
has been in the last 40 to 60 years. So this is a helpful way to see the gradual but unmistakable warming of our planet. Whatever month of the year you choose, the trend is that month is now warmer. Aprils are now about a degree and a half warmer than they used to be. Novembers are about a degree and a half warmer than they used to be, and so on. The red arrow on the right-hand side is sized to show 1.5 degrees of warming since the 1800s. Well, what about going forward? What should we expect in the coming decades? Here's a chart that takes the same data we've been looking at and extrapolates out beyond the mid-21st century. It's a simple, straight-line extrapolation and shows that by about the year 2032, Earth each year will be consistently about a degree and a half Celsius warmer than during pre-industrial times. And by 2050 or so, Earth each year will be about two degrees Celsius warmer than pre-industrial times. These levels of warming, 1.5 and 2 degrees C, are significant because those are the limits set by the Paris Agreement that we, as humans, must take action to avoid exceeding. This graphic makes it easy to see that we are not on track to stay under the warming goals set by the Paris Agreement. Now to the question of why this is happening. Well, it's not complicated. This warming is mostly the result of the relentless increase in the accumulation of human-caused greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, in particular CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, and fluorinated gases. In another video, we'll talk about CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide in particular, because those three gases in combination account for 90 to 95 percent of the warming that is happening. I've listed some other secondary factors as well. The most important of those secondary factors is a natural cycle we call the El Nino Southern Oscillation. El Nino is a cycle of warming and cooling of the Pacific Ocean that has been going on for thousands of years and continues right through into the present. Those El Nino cycles of heating and cooling layer on top of the human-caused warming. In years when El Nino is a warming cycle, as it is in 2023 to 2024, there'll be a little bit of additional warming on top of what is being driven by the constantly accumulating human-caused greenhouse gases. And then there's some other smaller factors that may also play a role. But the main factor that is warming the planet and altering global climate is as clear as day the relentless increases in accumulation of human-caused greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, especially CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide. 